Welcome back to another presentation brought to you by the Clean BC Go Electric programs. My name is Shannon Kelly and I'm pleased to introduce Alex Boats of Daimler to discuss where they are at in the production of their electric, medium and heavy duty vehicles. Hey everybody, my name is Alex Boats. I'm the uh, sales and marketing manager for Freightliners Electric Trucks and certainly excited to give another update here on uh, electric mobility for commercial vehicles, uh, what it takes to get there, kind of the electric journey and also what Freightliner is doing in that field. So let me start off with what is really the motivation for battery electric trucks. So most fleets really think in three different categories. There's environmental factors and general uh, green goals. There's the cost of ownership. Uh, battery electric trucks, of course, have bigger upfront investments, but over time and with a cheaper running cost, that cost of ownership ultimately turns positive for battery electric trucks. And then lastly, the policy and regulations. We already see uh, different states and different areas to put very stringent policies in place. And of course, over time, we expect these to become more and more stringent. Uh, so these are generally the three main categories why fleets think about electrifying their fleet. When we talk about the main differences, you see here on the slide on the left side, really that's your traditional diesel powertrain and you see all the blue highlighted items. We start with the engine under the hood normally that's connected to a transmission and the after treatment system. And then you have your def tank, diesel tanks and the drive line. In contrast, on the right side, you see the electric powertrain. And we usually start talking about the batteries. We mount the batteries under the frame rails that gives the truck a nice low center of gravity. And then that delivers the energy through the inverters really through to the E-axle in the back. We at Daimler took the approach of an E-axle, which essentially means an E-motor mounted to the axle uh, right away that um, gives us a lot of benefits. It, removes a lot of the moving parts in the vehicle and gives us a lot more flexibility on packaging, which allows us to have a variety of different battery packs and sizes here on our products. Under the hood, there is still what we call the electric auxiliary. So some cooling circuits, uh, HVAC system and some other componentry. It's also a nice from a service standpoint to still be easy to get to uh, those components. If we think about series production, so we at Freightliner will go to series production in 2022. And really we'll have two different variants. We'll have a medium duty truck, uh, the electrified version of our M2 truck today. So the EM2, that will be a straight truck, class six and seven. So your normal GVWRs of 26 to 33,000 pounds, up to 315 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will deliver a 230 mile uh, range. And this is really your truck for your pickup and delivery type of applications. Uh, on the heavy duty side, we'll have the E Cascadia as a day cap for class eight truck with GCW up to 82,000 pounds. And that vehicle will have up to 250 mile range. And this is really for your distribution and regional and drayage type of applications. So these products will come to market in 2022 when we go to full scale production with our Portland truck manufacturing plant. But in the meantime, we already put a variety of different pilot projects into the market namely our Freightliner Electric Innovation Fleet and our Customer Experience or CX Fleet. Uh, combined, these are 38 vehicles, 30 on the Innovation Fleet and another eight on the CX Fleet. And these vehicles are all in customer hands today. They run uh, real routes every day with real freight. And the purpose really is to put vehicles in customer hands and have them run in their normal operation to get feedback from them, to really be in that co-creation process and actively influence our serious product. Additionally, the electric journey is certainly something that you want to experience yourself. So by having these pilot projects, it gives us the opportunity, but also our customers the opportunity to really step through it from soup to nuts, including charging infrastructure, including looking for incentives, including going through that construction, including driver feedback and everything that has to do with it. So that when it comes time to uh, larger scale projects, people are ready and have some experience with it. And you can see here, uh, we obviously get a good amount of media attention as well. Our customers are very proud to uh, put media uh, releases out there and you see just a little 
glimpse here of some of the uh, vehicles that we have in operation with our customers. People always ask me about what is the feedback from these vehicles, and that might be one of the best parts of my job. You see here on the left side some of the vehicles in operation. Uh, you see in the center the infrastructure that we actually put into place at our facility in Portland. We certainly go through these processes ourselves. We put a number of chargers in operation for our own fleet, but we also help our customers put chargers into place. And charging infrastructure is certainly a big topic and oftentimes actually the first question that you need to answer before you go to the vehicles. But the driver feedback is probably the best thing here and you see some of the quotes, so they talk about how whisper quiet it is, they don't need to crank up their radio to drown out the diesel noise, um, they don't smell like diesel in the evening, other drivers ask them about it, so there's certainly a sense of pride. I heard about one driver that said uh, a car pulled up next to them and they asked them to pull over because they want to take some pictures with us. So they literally drive the future and there's certainly a sense of pride uh, as they do this. One of the best things about this pilot project or these two pilot projects is certainly the experience that we gain. And uh, just a couple of months ago here in November of last year, we put out this press release of over 500,000 miles accumulated on these vehicles. And there's no shortcut to experience. So really having these miles uh, on the road in real operation is very, very important to us. We wanna make sure that we're the trusted partner and that we have all the experience before we put these uh, vehicles to a large scale production. So having the experience on the road is certainly very important and we're very proud of that. But it's not only the vehicle, I already alluded to it a little bit. The vehicle is what we all think about and that's certainly the end goal. But you see on the slide here a little bit, uh, customer use case is important. These vehicles are certainly uh, designed for currently that hub and spoke type of application, which is last mile, uh, pickup and delivery, regional drayage type of applications. So applications where you go out during the day, you do your runs and you come back to a common spot at night where you are parked for a certain amount of time and you have a charger available to charge up those vehicles. So having a good understanding of how your operation runs and which operation is the right use case here for electric is certainly important as you plan your electric fleet. You also see regulations and incentives. We uh, certainly expect that regulations and incentives will accelerate the adoption of electric trucks. They are certainly more expensive than their diesel counterparts today. So incentives are necessary to overcome that higher purchase price. And we track closely where these incentives are. They are sometimes on a state level, sometimes on a federal level, sometimes even on a municipality level. So uh, that is certainly important as you um, identify your, your electric fleet conversion. Charging infrastructure, just as much. Uh, we always like to talk about the vehicle, but you need to charge it. There is currently not any charging infrastructure available for commercial vehicles. Our vehicles will have a CCS1 charger, which is the most common charger in North America. So it's not a proprietary plug. So in theory, you could pull up to most uh, chargers that are meant for passenger cars, but in reality, it's just not practical because these parking spots are meant for passenger cars and therefore not big enough for, um, for trucks with a trailer. So we really, uh, expect most customers to think about charging infrastructure at their depot, at their yard. That requires planning, that requires foresight. Uh, we always tell people, if you dig up concrete, make sure you only dig it up once. So planning out not only what you intend to put in operation in the next five years, but in the next 10 or 15 years is important. And we certainly can help with that process as well as we went through it multiple times. And then lastly, service and dealer rollout, right? The Selling the vehicle is comparatively easy, but ensuring that these vehicles stay on the road, that you have the support, that you have the parts and everything you need to keep it on the road is very important, which is why we work with our dealer network across North America as we get ready for these electric vehicles. So you can speak to the same people that you talk about your trucks today, about these electric trucks in the future. 
And let me just dive into charging infrastructure in a little bit more detail. You see an example here, and certainly every case is different. Every uh, yard, every depot is different. But in general, you can see here there is always the, the far side of the meter and your side of the meter. Generally, whatever is on the other side, the far side of the meter, the utility company is responsible. Uh, it's important to include your utility company early on as you think through electrification plans because it's important to understand is there enough power? Is the grid in your area strong enough to support whatever you're planning? The power draw, depending on how many vehicles you have, can be very significant. So your utility company is certainly a entity that you want to have in the boat as a stakeholder very early on. And then on your side of the meter, there is multiple different things you can think through. Uh, we put some optional stationary storage in here. That question comes up sometimes, especially as we see brownouts and blackouts. But in reality, uh, power outages are not very common in most areas. So oftentimes, this will not pencil out in a business case, but some customers certainly think through that. But then you have the power cabinets and ultimately the dispensers. And you see an example a sketch here with trucks uh, nosed in and, and uh, reared in. But uh, there is other opportunities here. You can have pull-through slots, uh, so you don't have to unhook your trailer. It's a little bit dependent also on your space opportunities, on how that impacts your day-to-day -day operations. So um, we always say, you know, this is a very, very big undertaking. We always recommend think through one depot, one yard at a time, um, you know, play all these options through, and then you have and develop a very good understanding what the important factors are. And then you can really scale out from there. So that's usually a very easy way to address it. And then because publicly available charging infrastructure is currently still hard to come by and it'll be, it'll be expanding more and more in the future, but in order to get that kick started, we at Daimler um, partnered with our local utility here in Portland, PGE, on what we call the charging island. And you see some of the, the renderings here. This is right in front of our, um, of our headquarter. And what we put in place there is a number of chargers that are gonna be available to the public and that are designed for commercial vehicles. So you see there will be pull through uh, lots here. Uh, we have a variety of different suppliers for these chargers or the EVSE, the electric vehicle supply equipment. And that will be really a learning center and availability for people that are trying to get their uh, feet wet with this to um, also understand how the charging works and, and we're gonna be able and in the position to answer questions uh, about that project. And uh, a couple of things obviously need to happen as we evolve over the next few years on uh, electric vehicles. I talked earlier about the hub and spoke type of applications that we currently think about. But in the future, as battery technology evolves, as the charge speed and the time that it takes to charge your vehicle gets shorter and shorter, and as we have more and more publicly available charging infrastructure, you can then think about these longer hauls and the ABCD type of routes and not only the ABA type of routes. And then of course the question, why does it still take uh, another two years here to go to production? We have some vehicles already out there today, but uh, our series production really doesn't start until 2022. And there's a number of reasons for this. One is testing. We put a lot of miles on these trucks we uh, put them through winter tests, summer tests, uh, whatever parts on these vehicles uh, are gonna be mounted, we make sure that we have tested them thoroughly beforehand and testing takes time. So that is uh, one of the driver. The other one is safety standards. So safety is always at the utmost importance. There is a lot of safety protocols that we actually put ourselves through. Uh, for example, we submerge batteries completely underwater, we crash test them, we Got to make sure that these vehicles are absolutely safe. Reliability is another big factor. Um, when we think about passenger cars, I always say when, you're, when your car breaks down, it's an inconvenience, but when your truck breaks down, it's profit loss. So uh, reliability is certainly of utmost importance when it comes to um, commercial vehicles. And lastly, service and parts network. So we have the largest uh, network in North America. All these network outlets 
uh, need to be ready for accepting these vehicles and that just takes time as well. We want to make sure that we do our homework here before we scale up these vehicles in the market. And then just as closing statements, here are some of the considerations that you usually would go through as you think about electrification of your fleet. So the first one is the truck, and you really need to think about which are the right routes to electrify, what is the load that I have, what is the range that I need. Also on the, on the depots or warehouses that are best suited, you think through what is really the best uh, warehouse, where is enough power there, where do you already maybe have enough power on the grid to support this, on charging infrastructure, there is a lot of different providers. Uh, we help and advise our customers who we have worked with and who we recommend. Um, and then also, like I said, get your utility company involved early on. This is very important. And that is certainly something that we always recommend as one of the first steps. Incentives, like I said, are important. Incentives help overcome these investments and there is incentives for the purchase of vehicles, for the installment of infrastructure, and sometimes even for the operation of some of that infrastructure. So that will give you the answer of when do you really see a payback for uh, your plans. And lastly, who maintains the truck and where is also a question that you should ask yourself. And with that, I would like to thank you. And if you have more questions, I always invite you to go to freightliner.com and look at some of our products and looking forward to questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your presentation, Alex. It can be extremely insightful to hear the perspective of a manufacturer in a fleet's journey to electrification. We also love to hear that there are already vehicles on the road and the drivers are enjoying the experience of driving electric. We hope to see even more on the road by 2022. Until then, if you would like more information on rebates available for the purchase of medium and heavy duty zero emission vehicles in BC, please visit the Special Utility Vehicle Incentive Program or the Clean BC Go Electric Commercial Vehicle Pilot Program. For more information on support services for fleets exploring electrification, please visit the Clean BC Go Electric Fleets Program page. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great day.